Just the other day, I was uh, sitting in my bedroom and, and meditating. And one of the things that the Lord told me to do was to pull up the history of Azusa Street. And as I was listening to that, there were many people that were involved in the Azusa Street experience. I'm talking about back in 1906. Uh, but the one that's mostly attributed to that is William Seymour, uh, an African-American man whose father was a slave who was uh, fought in the Civil War. And William Seymour... Uh, his experience was such that he was invited to uh, a town to preach. And after a week or several days of preaching his message, the pastor locked him out of the church, refused to let him back in. But a gentleman, Caucasian gentleman, saw him and took him into his home as he was led by the Lord to do so. And because William Seymour didn't have any money to get back home or, or the prospects of employment, he was unemployed, but the thing that really impressed me was that he spent hours upon hours praying and seeking the Lord to the point he went from a few hours to seven hours to, to even more than that, and he constantly prayed, and during the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, it seemed as though he was one of the latter ones to receive, but... He had preached from Acts the second chapter such a powerful message because prayer was so woven into his life that he was the catalyst for the revival that took place on Azusa Street with the giving of the Holy Ghost in California. So never know or you we may never know how we will impact our world by allowing prayer to become so interwoven into our lives. Now, yes, many of us cannot spend eight hours a day on our knees, but let me give you an interesting fact. You can pray as often and as much as you need to, even while you're working during the course of the day, within your heart or just by moving your lips if you're in a private location. Many of us work in cubicles or have offices where we are in or private other situations where we can pray or we can actually pray to God or we can pray within our heart. One day I was at work some years ago and, and I was sitting at my desk and all day long while I was working, interacting with other folks, I heard my spirit man praying continuously on the inside of me. I heard that other voice, not someone that was deranged and out of their mind or, or someone that needed some type of psychological help, but the spirit man, because the Bible says that the spirit helps us with our weaknesses or our infirmities because we don't always know what to pray for as we ought. But he prays and intercedes on behalf of the saints of God. Amen. But listen, the revelation that God just gave me. When you're waiting on the Lord, not only are you interweaving prayer into your life, but you also are interweaving him into your life. It means that we're becoming connected with God so dynamically that there becomes an intimacy between us and him to the point that it forces everything out of our lives that is not like him, which is the ultimate objective. God is not fearful. God does not lack courage. He does not lack strength. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. The Bible says they shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. So the Bible also lets us know that in our weaknesses, his strength is made perfect in our lives. What God is trying to do when we pray and seek him while we're waiting on him, while we're interweaving our lives with his life through the spirit of prayer and the guidance of his spirit and the instructions of his spirit, that we are really saying to him that I want, as David said in verse 4, to dwell in your house forever and to behold your beauty and your sanctuary. That we're saying that in this sanctuary, not the sanctuary that is built by hands, but this vessel is becoming a sanctuary unto the Most High God, a place for His inhabitation where He Himself can dwell uninhibited uninhibited 
because we're not fearful, because we're not sinful. We're not the practitioners of sin or of wrong, but we become the practitioners of that which is right, holy, and acceptable unto God because we're offering up our bodies a holy vessel unto God holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. So he says, when you wait on the Lord, you become of good courage. You lose that fearfulness. You're not, you're not, you're not a person that will shrink in the face of the enemy. As a matter of fact, you become so courageous that you take the fight to him in spiritual warfare. The scriptures say that the violent take up by force. And this is talking about those that are aggressive in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Now understand that your aggressiveness has to be met with wisdom because we have some people that are aggressive in God, but they lack wisdom and they lack discernment. And God wants us to move aggressively with wisdom knowing what we're after. And what we're attacking, every stronghold, every obstacle that the enemy has put up, every demonic spirit that he has instilled in someone else's heart or mind or is controlling him by, that, those are the things that we're in hot pursuit of. If you remember, I stated to you some time ago that you are anointed for a purpose but pursued with a vengeance. Now it's time to flip the script and let the devil know that I'm no longer afraid of you. Go after those demonic spirits after you have fasted and prayed and turned down your pray, plate and have sought instructions from the Lord as to how to pursue them. Stand up in your sanctuaries, men and women of God, and set order in your households because your churches sometimes are out of order. But you have interwoven yourself with God. So shed off that fearfulness of losing members. If you've got to start from ground zero with no one but yourself and God. The scriptures say where there are two or three gathered together in my name. He said that I will be there also. Some of you have been praying and waiting on the Lord. And God is saying to you today. I'm giving you the spirit of boldness. I'm giving you courageous, courageousness. I'm giving you fearlessness. You will deal with this enemy. You will speak to this spirit. You will put it out and you will annihilate it and you will destroy it. So it will no longer have your church and you in grips of fear. That if you deal with it, that your church or ministry will fall apart. That is not the business of God. I pray that God will uncover and expose the spirit of witchcraft. I pray that God will expose and uncover the practitioners of witchcraft. I pray that God would expose and and show us even those that are amongst us that are saved and filled with the spirit that are being led by demonic forces and those that are oppressed by demonic forces and spirits. That we will be able to see the hand and the move of God. Because we will be so so, so courageous. And listen to this. Not filled with our strength. Not filled with our intellects. Not filled with our theology. Not filled with our insight or our desires or our own wills. Or to impress our own wills. But in our weaknesses, his strength is made perfect. We need to come back to the spirit of humbleness and the spirit of the living God. We have too many celebrities and not enough people with the humility of God. One thing that really impressed me about what they said about William Seymour was this. Was that he was an extremely humbled man. He was humble. And anybody in his church that moved or that was in the congregation that moved in their flesh, he addressed it quietly and softly by saying simple words, brother or sister. Now that is the flesh and not the spirit of God. He was so humble 
that it didn't matter who the word of the Lord came through, as long as they knew that it was the Spirit of God using someone. We don't always have to grace the pulpit, men and women of God. Sometimes God wants to speak to some, through someone else to give us a word that will enlighten us as to where his pulse is. And that we need to reattach ourselves to be able to discern the Spirit of God, what's in order or what's out of order. I believe that God is moving us to a day where we're going to see a new level of revival in the church world, in Christianity. And this revival isn't necessarily going to take place behind the four walls of our edifices, our cathedrals, the places that we build or call the house of God. I believe that this makes move in revival because anytime that there is the spirit of apostasy or falling away, God always brings a revival. And what we need to pray is for the times of refreshing first and foremost to come back into our hearts. God declares that he who humbles himself will be exalted, but he who exalts himself shall be abased. We don't want to be abased, but we want to be exalted in humility. And this exaltation is not so much so for, again, celebrity status. I remember many years ago, very briefly, God led me to go to a, a ministry that was broadcast nationally and internationally with some prominent people, pastors. And when I pulled up in front of the church, it looked like nothing from the outside, but they had two separate locations. And the first thing God told me before I got out of the car, and I had my two daughters who were very young at the time with me, and he said, I sent you here not to be taken by their celebrity, but I want you to see something that I want you to retain through the years as I bless you in ministry. They were international. They were on TV. They were broadcast. One of the persons in the couple was very prominent, although the other one as well, but not as visible as the other. But that situation fell apart, and God brought it back to my remembrance that anyone that believes that there is celebrity in the kingdom and lacks humility, he will bring down. And he will bring down quite quickly. And not only would he bring them down, but he would pull the covers off of them and expose them for what they were. Now, waiting on the Lord requires a great deal of patience, significance, and prayer. It means that you must spend your time wisely in prayer and in the word of the Lord, as I've always encouraged you. But God wants to use you, man or woman of God. But your level of expectancy is determined by your ability to wait, to become interwoven and intertwined with him. Just want to say that you can do it. You can do it. In closing, I just want to thank the Lord for you continuously watching this broadcast. We pray that the word of the Lord has been truly a blessing unto you and to yours. And join us again on next week for Wednesday night, Time in the Word. God bless you until next week. This is Pastor William Whitfield, founder of Faith, Hope, and Love Ministries and Retreat Services International, wishing you a remainder of the week as blessed in the Lord. God bless you until next week. We wish to thank you for joining in to today's broadcast of Wednesday Night in the Word. Please join us again on next week for another exhilarating word from the Lord.